Today's Cowboys report is presented by Roan. I am rocking one of the Commuter Collection dress shirts because sometimes you just need to feel a little bit classy out there. Get 20% off your order at roan.com slash chat sports. Tell you more about them later on in today's show. We'll get into the Ezekiel Elliott situation. Big update from our friend Jane Slater. But first, we're trying to grow this channel. Continue to grow it. And we need your help to do so. So share today's video on Twitter, or you can share it on Facebook, you don't have Twitter, whatever, but if you share it on Twitter and you tag me at WhatGoingDowny, I will follow you. I assume you would already be following me, so I guess it's a follow back from that perspective. Tag me at WhatGoingDowny, let me click that share button, post to Twitter, if you tag me, I will follow you back. Appreciate your support here at the Cowboys Report. Let's get into the latest then on Ezekiel Elliott, who still remains an unsigned NFL free agent. We'll see if and when that ends up. I'm sure it will at some point, but the market for Elliott's been pretty quiet. And Jane Slater gave an update on NFL Network. Now, do make note background-wise that Jerry Jones has left the door open publicly. There has been a lot of speculation, I'll call it out there, on other media, social media, etc., about potential reunion between Zeke and the Dallas Cowboys. Let's break down then what Jane said uh, on NFL Network. Asked about, hey, is that being discussed in the building and or about Zeke and a reunion? She says, you'd think they're kicking it around at the Star in Frisco, but I circled back to one of my sources today and it was told, quite frankly, they're just not talking about it. When I asked there would be a situation where they would bring him back, it sounds like the same answer I've gotten from a number of teams. It would basically require an injury to one of their backs. Now, I totally believe Jane here, of course, longtime friend of the show. I don't think there's been a lot of interest from either side. I, and I know... Jerry Jones has left the door open publicly, and I know that certain players in that locker room, led by the quarterback, would love to have Zeke back, but this was the right decision. It was time to cut Ezekiel Elliott. He was way, making a way too much money for a player that, quite simply, has declined. There's no way around that. Zeke's market has been very quiet. Uh, he sent out the... He didn't. Schefter sent out the... Jets, Eagles, Bengals are the top three teams in Elliott for Elliott. And that was framed as those are the three teams interested in Elliott. Well, it was really more those are Zeke's preferred teams that was sent out from his agency. Elliott's market has been non-existent. It has not been there because he's lost steps, which will continue to lead to speculation of a reunion because Jerry loves it. So what is the percent chance that Dallas ends up bringing back? Ezekiel Elliott. This is going to be today's pinned comment. So if an ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know what you think the percent chance is. Now the figure I think should be very low. I think it is in the maybe 1 or 2% range. That scenario is other guys get hurt or the young guys just completely fail to step up altogether. It is simply time to see others at the running back position. It is time to see if he can emerge, if, if a Deuce Vaughn, a Ronald Jones, a Malik Davis, or Rico Dowdle can step up and take over for Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard, Deuce Vaughn, Ronald Jones, those guys. It's time for one of them to step up in the end. Now, Ezekiel Elliott isn't the same guy anymore. That has to be considered. And the value of, hey, let, we'll bring back Zeke to be our short yardage player at his age and probably not offering special teams value and what will probably continue to be signs of decline, I don't think there's that much value in it. If the players don't emerge at training camp, okay, maybe you can revisit from that perspective. I would rather choose to spend my money on the offensive line. I would rather invest in that category. I, look, if he wants to sign like vet minimum, there's never been a bad vet minimum deal. But if he still wants, you know, a couple million bucks, I'd rather invest in a backup on the offensive line. Now, today's Cowboys report is made possible by Roan. You can get 20% off your order at roan.com slash chat sports when you use promo code chat sports. The commuter collection can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. 
Head to Roan.com slash chat sports and use promo code chat sports. Save 20% off your entire order when you head to R-H-O-N-E.com slash chat sports and use code chat sports. Find your corner office comfort today because Roan makes a product for every occasion. The dress shirt like I'm wearing today. The four-way stretch fabric works great to make you feel comfortable and looking good with their Pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, polos, and more. So get that 20% off your order today at roan.com slash chat sports. That link will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. A big thank you to Roan for sponsoring the Cowboys Report. Let's talk Eric Scott now on today's show. ESPN named one surprise standout for each NFL team. All teams, all their beat writers picked one. Todd Archer picked Eric Scott, which I think is a pretty good selection there. The sixth-round pick, after all, did get some reps with the first team at OTA's minicamp due to injuries, which we will go more in-depth on here in a little bit since Archer kind of, I would almost say, buried the lead uh, with what he included in that write-up. But uh, Dan Quinn has hyped up Eric Scott, who Dan Quinn clearly likes Scott. He was a big reason why they should have to get him in the sixth round. Here's what Quinn said. When you see a guy wanting the moment to go compete, like, you know, they're balling up my fist and saying, I'm not leaving here. That's what I'm looking for specifically for the rookies. That kind of mindset and attitude is really what it takes for a young player to assert themselves in these moments because that responsibility is going to say, hey, man, can we count on you when it's there? Them learning to do that early on, that's a big deal. Knowing that, like, the amount of work that goes into say, I'm down for this challenge, I have seen that from Eric so far. Scott was a surprise six-round pick after the, uh, it wasn't really on anyone's draft radar, but Dallas had brought him in for a private workout that hadn't really been reported. They traded up to go get him. The numbers are pretty solid. Small sample size, a little high on the touchdowns allowed, of course. 18 of 36, 184 yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions, five pass breakups. The Cowboys would like a young depth corner because and Sean Wright, Kelvin Joseph so far have been unable to emerge in that category. Scott's role in year one is probably not to play that much because there's Diggs and Gilmore and Blant, maybe healthy Jordan Lewis, Israel Mukwamu. But maybe Scott, the six-round rookie, can beat out players like Deshaun Wright and Kelvin Joseph. As a six-rounder, he is not guaranteed a roster spot, but I would be surprised if Scott did not make the Cowboys roster this year. So what do you think ends up happening come roster cut down time, assuming everyone's healthy, right? Will Eric Scott make the roster this year? Type in Y for yes or N for no. If you have not already, make sure you guys are subscribed to us here at the Cowboys Report. Free videos each and every single day when you hit that sub button right now. Let's go to Nashawn Wright, as previously teased. Uh, in that ESPN write-up, Todd Archer seemed to reveal what was bothering Nashawn Wright, a quote-unquote minor knee injury, which we know that Wright had missed the public media portions of OTAs and at minicamp with an undisclosed injury. Now we know it is a minor knee injury, which is more information than what we previously had and that is fairly significant for Wright in particular, more so than Dallas. Look, it allowed other guys like Eric Scott to get some first year reps, super valuable for a young player. But that's a negative in the end for Wright. He needs to get healthy because Deshaun Wright is not guaranteed a roster spot. And frankly, if it was even, all things even, tiebreaker between Deshaun Wright, Eric Scott, I wonder if Dallas might go with Eric Scott over Wright because he was the more recent investment. And so far over the course of his NFL career, Wright has not shown enough to justify more long-term impact or play. Frankly, you're probably going to have to cut one of your former top 100 picks at corner. Now, you could always trade one, maybe if you're lucky, or maybe there are injuries, but the numbers game does not align very well. So pick one to cut. KJ for Kelvin Joseph. N.W. for Nishan Wright. Pick one to cut right now in the comments. At numbers game, right? Diggs, Gilmore, Bland, and Mukwamu, I think, are roster locks. Jordan Lewis, if healthy, is a possibility. C.J. Goodwin's a possibility. Even though he mostly plays for teams, we'll count him there with a hybrid of Mukwamu. Wright, Scott, and Joseph, 
you're talking about we just named nine corners. Dallas will not carry nine corners. Even if Jordan Lewis is hurt and they cut C.J. Goodwin, that would still be seven. And that's probably a little bit higher than what Dallas would prefer to go. Deshaun Wright last year had a chance to emerge. He didn't do it. They gave Mukwamu, they gave Xavier Rhodes shots instead of Deshaun Wright down the stretch last year, which was a very real troubling concern for the Dallas Cowboys. So we will see about Deshaun Wright. Hopefully he is healthy and good to go in time for training camp.